sleepy time, and you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. How many of you are looking for a young goat to make merry? <laughs> Times have changed in that sense. But as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. You see, the father of the house had forgiven, but the brother holds on to the grudge. Instead of getting better along with his brother, he is getting bitter. And I want to tell you, church, this can't be, whether it's in your own family. If someone starts to come back to you in true repentance, I want to encourage you to not close your arms, but open your arms, because for whatever reason, it's grace that sets us free. God, I don't understand it. You know, we should get judgment. That's what the Bible tells us. But it's grace that sets us free and brings deliverance into our lives. So I want to encourage you in your own families, if there's situations facing you like that, open your arms in love and see if God's love doesn't penetrate their heart and turn that situation around. Maybe it will be like the journey song. So now I come to you with open arms, nothing to hide. Believe what I say. So here I am with open arms. When somebody comes to you in that posture, I want to encourage you to receive it. Can I get an amen? amen? And may it also be so in the church. If there's situations where the church has hurted you or church people have hurted you, may it start with me with the forgiveness in our own life and in the family of Journey Church. Could we be a church and a people who forgive, who embrace, who seek restoration, who seek deliverance? Can I get an amen? amen. And guess what? Just like in the story, if the father of the house forgives, guess what? That means we need to forgive too, right? We need to forgive because God is up to something. He's moving. He's delivering. He's doing incredible things in our midst. Let me close with one final story. You know, growing up, I never had the opportunity to meet my real dad. In fact, you know, my mom got pregnant as a young lady. She was about 19 years old. And uh, this, as soon as uh, my father found out that she was pregnant, he ditched. He ran away. I've never seen him. At, not even once in my entire life have I ever had the opportunity to see him. But at that season in, the, in life in the 1970s, it was not a great time, and maybe it's still a very difficult thing. Actually, it is a very difficult time even today, but for a young woman to be pregnant out of wedlock was not the greatest thing in that season. And to add matters a little bit worse for my mom, my grandma and grandpa had eight children, and they didn't have much money, so the house was a bit full. So if you're bringing another mouth into the house, that's not necessarily a good thing, right? So when she got out of high school, it was just expected, you're getting out of the house. And now that you've actually had a child out of wedlock, guess what? You are really getting out of the house because that doesn't li line up with our Catholic doctrine back then in that day. You know, it didn't line up with what was going on. So she was out. But my great grandparents, my grandpa Ken and my great grandmother Lila, they took us into their home. They took us into their house when I was a, a young child, and uh, my mom had an opportunity to go, you know, work outside of the, the house. Obviously, she had to. She had to make a living, and I remember Saturdays were very important to me all, all the days growing up because I would always, even after my mom got her own place, she worked for a cruise line, and they always worked on Saturday. So my great-grandpa and my grandma would watch me during those days, so I'd hang out with them every single Saturday. My grandfather died in 1976 when I was about six years old, but he left a lasting impact on my life. I remember walking with him down the streets in Miami to the bakery that was down the street because he wanted to take me down there to get a donut or something of that sort. And uh, we'd be walking down the street and I'd be running on just a little bit ahead and he'd drop a quarter on the ground. And he'd say, hey, look what I see. And then he'd wait for me to come back and he'd act like he was going to grab the corner. The, anybody's dad or grandparent do that to them too? You know, he'd go down and he'd act like he was going to get it and he'd let me swoop it up and I'd be like, thank you, you know, thank you, this is awesome. Or he'd pull a quarter from behind my ear. And he was a real character. He just loved me and he welcomed us with open arms into their house. And there was one other thing that he would do. And many of you might have experienced this as well. He would say, you know, Eric, how much do you think I love you? Do you think I love you this much? And I'd say, yeah, I think you love me that much. No, 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 no. Guess what? You think I love you this much? And I'd say, yeah. And he'd say, no, Eric, I love you this much. And he would hold his arms open wide and he would welcome me into his arms. And he'd say, Eric, I love you. You know, you're, you're, you're my boy. Even though you don't have a dad here naturally, you know, I'll, I'll be your dad for this season of your life. And he welcomed me with those open arms of love. And I'm here to tell you today that Christ did the same thing for you. You know, there came a time for another tree to go up. 
it wasn't the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was one that was meant to take us back to the tree of life, the way that God intended it to be. But this tree was an old rugged cross. It was an instrument of death that was used to kill people. And Jesus went up to that instrument of death and he rose his arms open wide, just like that. You could go to Rio de Janeiro and see that statue there. He, he spread his arms wide and he willingly went to the cross and he said, nail me to this cross because I'm here to restore back the tree of life living. I'm here to bring you back to a place of hope, a place of peace, a place of restoration with the Father. Once we get it right between God, the Father, and ourselves, guess what? That means relationally, we can also get it right and have that same kind of healing amongst us as well if we put everything into priority. Do you hear what I'm saying? So he willingly went to the cross and opened his arms so that you and I could have life. Would you do me a favor? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes in this place for just one moment? You know, I don't know what brought you here today. You might have heard this story tons and tons of times, but my hope is today that whether you find yourself in the middle of a whole bunch of junk that you seem like you can't get out of or, or today's one of the best days of your life, I hope you leave here knowing that God loves you deeply enough that he died on a cross for you. And I just want to encourage you today that even if you've made a decision for Christ at some point in the past, you know, maybe you're here and you feel like you've strayed far from him today, but today's a day you want to go back to the cross and say, Lord, I love you. Thank you for opening your arms. I want to be your kid again. I want to live for you from this day forward. You know, whether you said that before or or maybe today's the first time you're ever sensing that in your heart and you're saying, man, God, I just want to live for you. I can't go on living this way. I want to live for you. And you're hearing about his love and his forgiveness and it's penetrating your heart. And maybe you've got some butterflies this morning. If that's you in this place, I want to ensure you that nobody's going to do anything weird, but we would like to pray for you right where you're at. We won't call you to the front or anything like that, but I would like to know who I'm praying with. If today's the day you need to dedicate or rededicate your life to God, would you raise your hand up high so that I could see it for just a moment? Is there anybody in here today? I see you. I see you, ma'am. I see you, sir. And you in the back. And you in the back. Father, we come before you humbled once again, yet rejoicing with those who have raised their hand today saying that they need to dedicate their life to you or maybe even rededicate their life to you today. Lord, we join with them as believers in Jesus Christ and say, Lord, we receive the forgiveness that you granted when you died on a cross and rose again three days later. Lord, we put to death the sins of the past. We nail them to the cross. And Father, we walk forward from this place in newness of life. And from this day forward, we're going to live every day to serve you. Father, we want to honor you with our lives. Lord, empower us to live this thing called the Christian life, to know you deeply and intimately. And we long one day to spend eternity with you in heaven. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Hey, there's one more group of people. Sorry to ask you to bow your heads one more time you're here today, you know, maybe your arms have been closed. You've been, you know, the world beat you up. Maybe your own decisions have beat you up. People have beat you up. Friends have disappointed you. Family members have disappointed you. Relationships have hurt you. And you really just don't want to continue living that way. You want to live a life of forgiveness with open arms of hope, of peace, of joy. You want to live out the kinds of things I'm sharing today. I would like to pray for you too. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I can see it? Hands all over the place today. We're going to pray for you before we close right now. And Lord, we just lift up those whose word you've used to touch their hearts today. May they have experienced your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your peace in this place today. And Lord, I suspect that whether life had started to close them off at a very young age because of bad family circumstances or later relationally or just the trials and tribulations of life has caused them to live a life where their arms are closed, where they don't walk around with the peace and joy of the Lord. I pray today and ask 
and agree, you break that spirit over their lives, Lord Jesus, that you, that you cause a sense of freedom, of hope, of peace, of joy to flow in them and through them, of forgiveness, oh God, that their arms would go from being closed to being wide open living for you. Father, if there are people in their lives that they need to forgive, Lord, I pray that you encourage them to step out in faith and forgive them and watch how you bring restoration into their lives. Lord, I thank you for the people who are here today. And Lord, I just ask you to bless them and keep them, to make your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. Lord, would you give them peace in Jesus' name. Might the people of Journey live their life to make a difference in the lives of others by loving you, by loving others, and by serving the world in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Put your hands together for God one time. And... Hey, would you put your hands together for those who made a decision for Christ today too? best decision you could ever make in your life. We just want to give you a couple of next steps before you go today. If you made a decision to turn your life over to Christ, we would like to know about it. We'd like to help you start your journey off in a great way. If you would, use your My Journey card as a tool, and we will get you some information out this week to help you start your walk off with Him in a great way. Outside, I encourage everyone to plug into a small group where you can grow in your relationship with other people. If you're a guest, 